Well, the fifth installment of the Twitter files revealing the links the company went to ban former President Donald Trump from the platform. Journalist Barry Weiss tweeting, after January 6th, Twitter employees organized to demand their employer ban Trump. There is a lot of employee advocacy happening, said one Twitter employee. But there was some pushback, at least a little pushback. One employee wrote on January 7th, maybe because I'm from China, but I deeply understand how censorship can destroy the public conversation. <clears throat> Joining us now is Fox News contributor Tammy Bruce. Tammy, good morning to you. Good morning. What's your biggest takeaway from Twitter Files 5? Well, it, it's what we would have expected, but it's nice to have proof, right? It's, it's good to have it shown to us. But I would caution, and I think this is the larger story, this isn't really, and Trump always said this from the beginning, that none of this really is about him, that this is the exposure of something much larger that he is one aspect. And what he represents, of course, is uh, recognizing the forgotten man and woman, uh, voicing opposition to things, new ideas, and all of that. The larger story here is, of course, the collusion, apparently, with government uh, and Twitter to do this. This is one entity. It, it, we also have Google. We have Facebook. We have other uh, you know, organizations in the country that this shows us with the ease with which they did this and the comfort uh, and the uh, kind of the automatic willingness to do it uh, is that this is how they operate. This is a sign that the left's primary focus is to shut people up, is to shut down the conversation, because I think they know that's the only way they can win. Uh, but also it is because that's what they've become used to. Uh, and for generations, I would argue, through legacy media and other dynamics, which is harder for us to understand or see, now we suddenly saw it. And I think that that's the larger big issue. It's not, people shouldn't think this is just about Twitter, that this is about the nature of government and its attitudes, what we've been facing, and what has been controlling the country. I agree. I totally agree that it's a starting point, which we may see grow in the coming days, because Elon Musk seems to be teasing the idea that the next revelation inside Twitter files is the extent they went to control our minds when it came to COVID. He tweeted the following, my pronouns are prosecute Fauci. Now, look, in response to that, I don't know if you saw this, but he went on stage at a Dave Chappelle oh, yeah, concert sure and he was booed in San Francisco. Mm. And The Atlantic wrote this. The tweet is a cruel and senseless play on pronouns that also invokes the right's fury towards Anthony Fauci. They equally said, Tammy, that this was this was an offense against Fauci mm -hmm. and, by the way, dangerous mm -hmm. towards the trans community. Well, see, that's that's it. Everything's a danger. And that's that's the conditioning of people into fear. All right. Uh, I'm writing a new book about how fear is used to control society. All of this moves into fear, making people who are liberals fearful, saying everything's a danger, making conservatives and others who, who don't form feel like, well, I'm a danger to society. It's obscene. It is unacceptable. Those accusations against Musk are false. They're lies. But this is where you see what they they fall back on the training. They've been training the American people. And of, of all people who should not want to be trained, behave in a certain way, it should be the left. There is a reason I was on the left. It used to be about real personal freedom, personal responsibility, wanting government out of our lives. And yet now this is what we've got. Yeah. Training the American people. Yeah. That phrase in and of itself is bothersome. Tammy, great to see you this Thank morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.